Hey everyone, if you have an e-bike and want to power it completely off-grid or just extend its range, a power station seems like the perfect companion to recharge it on the go. But will that work? To answer that question, Blue Eddy was kind enough to send over their EB70S power station and PV200 folding solar panel for the power side of things, and Haybike provided their Mars folding e-bike so I could give this a go. In this video, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the Mars e-bike, try solar charging the EB70S with the 200 watt solar panels while I'm out on a ride, then see if I can fully recharge the Mars from the power station. In theory, the larger 716 watt hour battery in the EB70S makes it a perfect size unit to charge the 600 watt hour battery in the Mars. But will it work in the real world? Let's find out. Haybike is a newer company that offers a series of e-bikes that pack a ton of performance and quality for the money. The Mars is a rugged folding e-bike that works just as well for commuting around town as traversing dirt roads and wooded paths. It's a really unique design that's like a burly mountain bike while being just as comfortable as a cruiser. I really like the black finish and minimal utilitarian design kind of feels like the Jeep Wrangler of e-bikes, if that makes any sense. The Mars sells for $1,099 with their current $100 discount, which is an amazing value. Haybike also offers models as cheap as $839, which is honestly competitive with a standard bike. Check out the description for links that can save you even more money. The Mars features a 500 watt brushless rear motor with multiple levels of pedal assist. There's a removable 600 watt hour NMC lithium ion battery with USB output to keep your electronics charged on the go. That gives you a 48 mile range if you pedal and 38 miles with throttle only. It has a seven speed Shimano transmission, grippy 20 inch puncture resistant tires that are a super fat four inches wide for all terrain use. There's a lockable front suspension fork and cushy cruiser style seat with post shock. Mechanical front and rear disc brakes with large 180 millimeter rotors let you stop in a hurry. There's a headlight and rear brake light with a built-in horn. Integrated LCD display with battery gauge, speedometer, odometer, and watt meter. And it supports riders from 5'3 to 6'3 in height and up to 330 pounds. The cool thing is it folds down into a compact package with just a couple moves for easy transport. It includes a rear rack that supports up to 100 pounds and has optional accessories like a rear saddlebag, basket, or front rack. It comes with a two-year warranty on the bike and battery. Assembly was super easy. In fact, my 14-year-old son unpacked the bike, inserted the handlebar stem, added the seat and pedals, and took it for a test drive before I even knew the bike had arrived. It's that easy. Before I went for a long ride, I wanted to set up solar charging for the Blue Eddy power station so it would be charged when I got back. The EB70S is pretty much a scaled up version of the EB3A that I recently tested. Now it lacks the integrated power brick and new screen design, but is otherwise very similar. It has a large 716 watt hour LFP battery rated at 2,500 cycles for a super long lifespan. It has a 15 watt wireless charging pad, 100 watt USB-C ports, regulated DC output, and an 800 watt pure sine wave inverter. I wanted this to be a fully off-grid setup, so to recharge this quickly from the sun, you need a big solar panel. Luckily, Blue Eddy sent along their PV200 solar panel, which will pretty much max out the solar input on the EB70S. It's a portable 200 watt monocrystalline solar panel that uses a four section folding design that weighs 16.1 pounds. The surface has a rugged ETFE coating that is a feature I look for in any folding panel because it gives you a longer lifespan and helps bring efficiency to an impressive 23.4%. The outside has a heavy duty patterned fabric that resists dirt and abrasions and looks quite stylish. The integrated nine foot cable uses a super beefy 12 gauge wire with MC4 connectors. 
The junction box feels very strong and is IP65 rated to keep water and dust out. They also include an MC4 to 8mm adapter cable to directly connect this to the EB70S. The cables are organized in a side pouch with a high quality waterproof zipper. There are three integrated kickstands with a clever snap design to easily adjust the angle of the panel. I started the EB70S fully drained at 0% to see how much I could charge it in one day with a single PV200 panel. I set this up around 10.30 a.m. and was already getting 128 watts. It soon stabilized at 150 watts, which is quite solid considering it wasn't ideal conditions that day. My plan was to go for a day-long ride and hope that the battery would be close to charge when I got back. I'll let you know the results in a bit. Now the Mars is my first e-bike, so I'm far from an expert, but this thing is an absolute blast. It works just as well on paved roads as it does on pitted dirt roads and even forest walking paths here in Maine. I find myself going five to 10 mile bike rides without even giving it a second thought because the smooth, powerful motor makes me feel like I have superpowers and I literally never break a sweat no matter what the terrain is. I can easily cruise up steep hills and put in little or no effort. The display gives you all the information you need in a crisp backlit screen. Buttons allow you to switch between the different levels of pedal assistance. By default, there are four levels. Zero is no assistance. One is around 10 miles an hour, two is 15, and three is top speed at 20 miles an hour on a flat road. Once you start pedaling, the motor ramps in smoothly to give you a boost. I found the 500 watt motor to be quiet and responsive with lots of torque and quick acceleration. If you've never rode an e-bike, level one gives you enough power to offset the weight and make it a little bit easier than a normal bike. Level two makes you feel like Lance Armstrong, all juiced up. And level three makes you feel like a superhero that has endless power and stamina. The nice thing is the pedal assist levels are completely configurable. By long pressing on the top and bottom buttons, you can enter settings and choose how many levels you want and the exact amount of power for each. I chose to modify mine to have steps zero through five so I could have more granularity in the levels and a slower first step for getting started without too much torque. This is a class two e-bike, which means you can activate the motor by either cranking the pedals a bit or pressing the throttle switch on the handlebars. The throttle is very useful when starting off or making U-turns because you have full control of when the power kicks in and how much. It also means that you can choose not to pedal at all and just cruise like it's a motorcycle. And that might be my go-to way of riding. Although it's 66 pounds, it feels super nimble to steer because of the lower center of gravity. And the motor powers you smoothly as you ride. Even going up steep hills, I was able to maintain 12 to 14 miles an hour with minimal pedaling. You can easily reach 20 miles an hour if you're cruising along on a flat road and pedal a bit. On downhills, I was able to go up to 30 miles an hour and the bike felt rock solid with good control at high speed. On dirt roads and even rough walking paths in the woods, the suspension and knobby tires kept me in control with plenty of grip and power. The seat is the most comfortable bike seat I have ever used, and it makes longer trips much more enjoyable. On paved roads, you can lock out the front shock and cruise efficiently. The mechanical disc brakes were able to smoothly bring me to a stop every time, but they can make a bit of noise, as all disc brakes tend to do. I always felt confident I could come to a stop in a hurry if I needed to. The Shimano 7-speed shifter worked smoothly, although I found I only used the few highest gears because the pedal assist has you moving along at such a fast clip. In fact, I only used the lower gears when the battery ran out and I needed to pedal home under my own power. Range is impressive. I was able to get around 30 to 35 miles per charge in my tests, which is on the lower end of their specs, but that's because I was driving on very hilly terrain and dirt roads with the pedal assistance on high most of the time. And well, I was pretty lazy at pedaling and really leaned on the throttle. Once the screen shows a blinking battery, you probably have a mile of range or less before it conks out. On my way home back on this trip, I ran out about a half a mile from home 
and I was able to pedal back by downshifting and the heavy bike was surprisingly not that big a deal to manage. When I got back home at 6 p.m., the EB7ES had charged from empty to four bars, which is really impressive. I wish I could give you a more specific number for science purposes, but with this five segment display, we have to guesstimate this to be around 80%. That's actually quite good considering my property gets shaded out around 2.30 p.m. and I started charging later in the morning. With a sunnier yard and a full day of sun, I feel very confident this could charge to 100%, no problem at all. To charge the e-bike, the lithium battery can be charged in place or removed by tilting the seat, turning the key to unlock, and sliding the battery up and out. The battery weighs 9.35 pounds, but the integrated handle makes it very easy to carry. This is an NMC lithium ion battery rated at 48 volts and 12.5 amp hours or 600 watt hours. To test the ability of the Blue Eddy to charge the Mars battery, I first topped off the EB70S to 100% to simulate better solar conditions. I then plugged the included hay bike wall charger into the AC port of the EB70S and plugged the XLR looking connector into the Mars battery. The Mars wall charger takes roughly six to seven hours to fully charge the 600 watt hour battery. I left it charging overnight. In the morning, the EB70S was fully discharged. When I put the battery back on the Mars bike and turned it on, the battery gauge said it was full, which is really great. Now my hunch is the state of charge was probably closer to 80 or 90% charge because there must be losses when charging the Mars battery from the AC wall adapter. Earlier, I tested how much power I could pull from the AC output of the EB70S with a watt meter. In the end, I was able to pull 605 watt hours, which is 85% of the rated capacity of 716 watt hours. Now that's quite good and well above the 80% average I typically see, so we know the EB70S has enough output to fill the Mars battery if there were no losses with the charger. So the short answer is the EB3A can be fully charged from a 200 watt solar panel on a sunny day, and it can almost completely fill a Mars bike battery when charging via the AC wall adapter. Now I wish that there was an option to charge the bike with DC because that would be more efficient. So this is the part of the video where I was going to show you how I strapped a milk crate to the back of the bike so I could take the EB70S on the road with me and trickle charge the Mars battery as I rode. Surprisingly, it seemed to work. I was even going to take this further by slapping this 50 watt flexible solar panel on top of the crate to trickle charge the EB70S on the go for even more range. It was all gonna be so cool. However, I emailed Haybike to make sure this was all safe to do and they specifically told me not to charge the battery while driving, so I don't recommend that you do any of this. Sorry, I mean, you could bring the EB70S with you on a trip and use it to charge when you stop for lunch, but you're not supposed to ride and charge at the same time. If you do want more range, fortunately Haybike sells replacement batteries for $319. So you could chuck an extra battery in the back and make the swap if you wanted to go on a 70 to 80 mile trip on a single charge. It's nice to know that you can get extra batteries to extend the usable life of the bike. I really appreciate that. Oh, and speaking of lifespan, I confirmed with Haybikes that the Mars NCM battery is rated for 600 cycles to 80% capacity, which is pretty typical of this chemistry. That means you could do a 30 to 40 mile commute every workday for almost two and a half years, or a shorter 20 mile commute for five years before the battery had lost just 20% of its capacity. Remember, at that point, the battery still works fine, but your range would just be 20% less than when the battery was new. You can further extend the life of the battery by not discharging it all the way to 0% or not storing it for long periods of time at 100%. The EB70S uses a lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery rated at 2,500 cycles all right, everyone, I hope this was useful. I sure learned a lot. 
If you haven't tried an e-bike because you thought they were too expensive or just not worth it, you should really check out Haybike. If you look around at the reviews online, they're all overwhelmingly positive and Haybike just seems like a great company. Personally, I love the Mars and everyone who tries it starts out as a skeptic and ends up wanting one. It completely changes your perspective on where you can go with a bike. You get the fun of a scooter with bigger tires, better ride position, zippy performance with no fossil fuels, and no need for a special license. It's a blast. I honestly don't know how they can sell such a capable bike at this level of quality at these prices. Until I started this video, I thought all e-bikes were many thousands of dollars and well beyond my budget, but it's cool to see this new segment of affordable e-bikes that makes them much more accessible. The EB7ES is a great little unit that is a perfect match for charging an e-bike or electric scooter with its efficient electronics and long-lasting LFP battery. The PV200 solar panel is a great way to take your bike completely off-grid or just keep the EB70S charged up when camping or boondocking. I just want to say thanks to Blue Eddy and Haybike for providing these products for this experiment. I had a lot of fun putting this together and have been going on bike rides all summer with my new ride. Let me know if you've tried a setup like this in the comments or have any questions. This fall, I'll be focusing on reviewing larger LFP power stations that I think are best in class for home backup so please consider subscribing if that's interesting to you. All right, thanks everyone. Till next time.